Hello everyone, my name is Kishan and welcome to today's video on star schemas and snowflake schema. So before we jump on to star schema and snowflake schema, let's talk about what a database schema really is. So database schema is a blueprint that defines the structure and organization of a relational database. So it, as shown in the diagram, uh, there are like different tables and those tables are related to each other via primary key or foreign key relation. So it could be one to one, many to one many to many so that way so it basically shows how the data is stored and organized in a database uh, a schema and it and how different elements of that database are related to each other uh, so a database schema is really a logical or a blueprint of what uh, really exists it, it does not hold any physical data like people do talk about can you export the schema you you basically are talking about like can you give me the different tables that are available and the relationship between those tables uh, by export we are not going to really export any data when you say export database schemas uh, so yeah that's what database schema is it's like uh, what are what what tables or what entities are available and how they are related to each other so now let's talk specific about what is a star schema. Star schema is really easy to understand. Uh, if you recall our old uh, video on the fact and dimensions, we talked about a center transactions table. So uh, think about a table uh, which holds uh, transactions on say Amazon. So it basically would have like a transaction ID, which would be the primary key, and then it would have a product ID. So so, so that you can know what product uh, is being bought the customer ID so you know the details about the customer that is buying the product and then you want a time ID uh, basically to kind of pinpoint when the product was purchased uh, and then you could be having physical stores or not uh, so you could have a store ID and then um, the quantity of the product that was bought and the amount that was paid so say suppose you have a large table a transactions table so to support this transactions table which is basically a fact table you would have a dimension table so you will have a dimension table on products so it will have it will hold all the product related information like product id product name product description the manufacturer's id manufacturer's name and maybe the manufacturer's ad address so so products would be a dimension table that supports the fact table fact transaction table um, now again you would have another table dimension table called as customers which will hold customer related info like customer id name num phone number state country whatnot then you will have you will have a time dimension table which has like the time id the day month quarter year when the product was purchased and then you would have something called as a store dimension table that basically holds the store information like the store id the type of store the address of the store and whatnot so this is basically a star schema where you have a center fact table which is supported by um, dimension tables so this is a really simple design uh, it is not at all complicated if you see there would be like fewer joins if you want to get any info because you are just joining the center table with max four tables right um, so the data is very denormalized here so the dimension table is uh, like denormalized so that's like the basic difference between a star schema and a snowflake schema uh, so let's talk about snowflake schema for a bit and then we'll talk about the differences and the advantages and whatnot so snowflake schema also would have a center fact table let's say the same transactions table and, and then you have like the product table that we talked about and the customer table that we talked about but here the uh, and then you have of course the time table and the store table as well but here the product table would then get normalized into say another table where we have the dealers information so we'll push all the dealers information into a separate table so basically create creating a sub dimension table so in the products table you would have like product id product name product description and then you have manufacturer id which would be a foreign key which would then point to the dealer table for example and the dealer table you will have a manufacturer id which will be the primary key and then you will have the details of the dealer such as the manufacturer's name and the address and whatnot so you basically took a big dimension table and then split it into two you normalized the dimension table 
and similarly you could then normalize the customer table as well by moving the customer's address information into a separate table and again the customer id in the customers table will act as the primary key and the customer id in the address table will act as the foreign key so basically that that old definition of schema is coming into place but if that you know how you define entities interacting with each other and similarly you can then break the store table also into two tables so this could be two or more so it basically would represent, represent something like a snowflake where you have a center fact table and then multiple dimension and sub, sub dimension tables so that is basically a snowflake schema where you uh, normalize the dimension tables so yeah so a star schema is denormalized but the advantage of the denormalization is that now you have fewer tables to join so your queries are less complicated and the executions are faster um, but you end up with data redundancy so say suppose if you have to update the manufacturer's address you have to go ahead and update each product uh, which had that manufacturer address column but yeah so that that is like how you increase the data redundancy and you kind of raise the risk of data inconsistency as well so the data is repeated and you could end up with inconsistent data and because the data is repeated so much a star schema would need more space coming to snowflake schema here the data is normalized so the dimension tables are normalized but because of this you end up with more tables more smaller tables so your joins or your queries will become complicated and would probably run slower but then you kind of have less data redundancy your data is not being duplicated and it would need less space because the data is not being duplicated right so star schema is really su suitable to an application which requires really simple uh, structure but you are heavy on heavily dependent on the performance like you need the performance to be better you could you you could then yeah go ahead with star star, star schema the main demerit of the star, star schema is that uh, it would have like the data would be denormalized and redundant and this can lead to like wide dimension tables as you see that product table and then it will take up more space and and bring up issues of data inconsistency uh, so as the schema flattens the dimension hierarchies into a single table the depth and breadth gets limited so this makes the star schema unsuitable for large data warehouses uh, and uh, so for such kind of things you have to go with snowflake schema because yeah star schema would not be able to handle complex and dynamic dimensions that require really accuracy and high data normalization uh, so snowflake schema can accommodate complex and dynamic dimensions and hierarchies but it main downside would be that it will get really complicated and the performance uh, uh, would be hampered and you would uh, kind of end up with small dimension tables that covalute the data warehouse design and maintenance. So for those reasons, Snowflake schema is fit for users who want to consume data in a drill down fashion and you want like really high data accuracy and all. Um, so in conclusion, star schema prioritizes query speed and simplicity and Snowflake schema would focus on data normalization and storage efficiency. Um, so based on your need you could then go ahead with a star schema or a snowflake schema if you always need historical data with pinpoint accuracy you need snowflake schema because there you could then handle slowly changing dimensions easily uh, with star schema would be much more suitable for any data visualization uh, applications where you don't really want very complicated query but you need data like you know like um, with better you need data quicker like you need the performance of the queries to be fast so that your dashboards do not run slow in that in that case you denormalize the data and get in additional information in the same table uh, 
that way you could answer the questions faster so any bi application could have star schema not necessary all but could have a could go ahead with star, star schema and any uh, data warehousing application where you need historical data with pinpoint accuracy and where you are slowly changing dimensions and all you go ahead with snowflake schema uh, so i hope this video was informative and you learned something new please do let me know your thoughts in the comments this is kishan signing off thank you